Hello, welcome back. Mindful of Retro here with what I suspect is going to be a short video. If you saw my previous video, I did an impromptu temperature test of the PLA chip. I was curious to see if the metal shield actually had an effect on heat dissipation. One of the commenters on that video, Thilo, suggested that perhaps the SID chip or the VIC-2 chip were better candidates for doing heat tests. This time I'm going to turn my attention to the VIC-2 chip and measure its temperature with and without the metal shield installed. As before, I have my thermocouple mounted underneath the chip and everything's ready to go. So, if you're interested in watching temperatures rise on a thermometer and timers tick along, then the next five minutes is just for you. Here we go, turning the Commodore 64 on. Now. And to recap, we're at an ambient start temperature of 18 degrees Celsius today. The metal shield is not installed, and the temperature is rising quite quickly already. And approaching one minute, and the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. And at about two minutes, only one minute ago, we were at 35 Celsius. We are now at 41 degrees Celsius. That's about 106 Fahrenheit. The temperature initially ramped up quickly from the start temperature of 18 Celsius. At five minutes, we're at 49 Celsius. And at uh, 22 and a half minutes, we're at 58 Celsius. And coming up to 30 minutes, which is the end of the test, we have reached 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And as an added bonus, I thought I would keep recording while I turn the computer off and watch the VIC chip cool down for a little while. Turn the computer off now. So with the power off, the VIC chip does cool down relatively quickly, although even at one hour of cool down, we're at 22 degrees Celsius, so still not quite room temperature. Okay, here we are back after about four hours of letting everything cool down to room temperature again, and I'm going to add a little bit of Arctic Silver Thermal Paste to the bottom of the RF or EMI shield. In particular, the little leg that extends down and touches the top of the chip. This will help transfer heat off the top of the chip uh, and hopefully into the metal and dissipate the heat. You just need a little bit, enough to just touch the surface of the chip. And place the shield back properly, drop it in place. Make sure it's touching properly, and it is, and I'm going to secure it down and rerun the test and see how well it does at dissipating heat. Okay, here we go, part two of the test. The computer is turned on, the metal EMI shield is in place with thermal paste on the bottom of the foot touching the top of the VIC chip. And the temperature is rising fast. Just past five minutes, we are at 49 degrees Celsius, exactly what we were at with no shield. 55 degrees Celsius at 11 and a half minutes. 20 minutes has passed, we are at 58 Celsius. And coming up to 30 minutes, again, guess what? We are at 60 Celsius. The exact same temperature as the first test with no metal shield in place. So what does this tell me? That the metal shield serves no purpose. It does absolutely jack squat to dissipate heat off of any of the chips that it touches. Here's a little graph of the temperature profiles as I recorded them in the two tests. As you can see, they both overlap exactly. Uh, the most significant temperature increase was between 0 and 5 minutes. 
And again, it appears that the metal shield has no value as a heat sink or heat dissipator whatsoever. I think it's safe to say that if you have a Commodore 64 with a metal shield inside, it is okay to remove that shield. In fact, it's probably better for the computer if it's out. And ultimately, the best thing to do would be to have dedicated heat sinks on each of the individual chips. And I think I'll cover that in a future video. I'd like to thank Thilo for commenting on my previous video, which led to this video. I really enjoy when people comment and we get a conversation going. So please comment and please rate. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. See you soon.